run organization putting this on, they are doing everything. So they're going to start it off, they're going to finish it, do everything to this. No faculty are going to be up here talking, just there. We're going to see how they do, just like these contestants here. Um, we have six judges, one is in transit. I'm stalling for a couple of minutes because he's about three miles away, hopefully he will make it. Everybody got a program with the, uh, the judges in it, can read that, and also the order of the uh, contestants. Two things I need to tell you about the, um, the, the competition. One is we are going to have it so where one category is all business, the other category is all social entrepreneurship. We are going to deviate one little thing for that. The first person that's going to be give, uh, giving their presentation is in the social realm. They have an obligation like, to go to the default. One of the people do it. One of the persons do it. And so he's going to go first. Then we're going to come right back into what we call the, the category of business and then go into the social area. You'll see it up on the screen and we'll tell you what the category is for that contestant that's up here. We also have two judges here that we're very happy to have, but they also have another obligation to be in Orlando at 8 o'clock. So if I keep talking now, then we'll never get there. Uh, so what we're going to do is that's why we selected the business category to go first because their area of expertise is in the area of business. Uh, when the business category is done, they've asked me to tell you this so they don't, you don't think they're just running out because they're unhappy. They have another obligation to go to. Okay? All right, I'm going to hand this over to uh, the president of the SEG group, which is the Stetson Entrepreneur Group, and the uh, vice president, Joe. Group's first annual pitch contest. I'm Ashley Holloway, a senior marketing major here at Stetson, and I'm the president of SEG. And I'm Joe Rainville, a junior economics major here at, in the School of Business, and I am the vice president of SEG. So basically, the Stetson Entrepreneurial Group is a new organization on campus. We started around October of last semester, and our goal for the, over the past semester and the years to come is really to just kind of spark the entrepreneurial spirit within each individual here on campus. I really want to prove that entrepreneurship is not just within the students. For the rest of this semester and for the semesters to come, we plan to hold several events to help us reach our goals. Every Wednesday at LEC 124, we have our weekly meetings. And also, once a month, we have what we call Mayor of Dios, which is dinner with our faculty advisors, where we watch entrepreneurial movies and have entrepreneurial discussions. Also, another thing we're looking to start in the very near future is what we call Coffee Chat, where we sit down with an entrepreneur and just basically have a discussion and talk about their failures, their successes, and hopefully build our, our futures off of those. Also, on March 21st and 23rd, we'll be holding our first startup, Startups at Stetson, which will give participating students the opportunity to go from idea to prototype in 54 hours. They'll also have the opportunity to interact with like-minded individuals as well as experienced entrepreneurs. And lastly, our largest endeavor is our Enactus program. Enactus is a program that is geared towards promoting social entrepreneurship. And not only will this program allow us to gain experience in the social entrepreneurship realm, but it will also give us an opportunity to possibly participate in global competitions that will not only put our group on the map, but will also put the Stetson University on the map. If you have any questions about these events or our group in general, you can reach us at any time on Facebook, Twitter, Forcing, and we'll soon be launching our own website. Like Joe said, we obviously have a lot of stuff going on this semester, but what you guys are here to see tonight is the first pitch competition. So basically, it's all about elevator pitches. And what those are are just kind of brief speeches that these students right here, our contestants, have come up with, and their ideas for new products or projects or solutions to problems that they see throughout the community. So throughout the week, they have had the opportunity to meet one-on-one with the judges and kind of get coaching a little bit on how to pitch their ideas and you know public speaking and things like that. All submissions were original and realistic ideas. All business pitches um, were geared towards with the intent of making a profit, while all social uh, submissions are geared towards changing society for the better. Each contestant will have a maximum of 90 seconds to give their pitch. At the end of that 90 seconds, a stop sign will flash on the screen behind them, and they will be required to stop their pitch, regardless of what they have finished. At that point in time, the judges will be given an opportunity to ask questions. So just like we were talking earlier, one of the things that we're really focused on as an organization is kind of spreading entrepreneurship throughout the entire Stetson community and unifying the campus as a whole. And one of the things that we're really proud about for this particular event is the wide variety of contestants that we've got. 
Out of the 65 videos and 78 students that participated in those videos, 32 were submitted to the social entrepreneurship track and 33 were submitted to the business entrepreneurship track. They range from freshmen all the way to graduate students. Now from those students, we have had 22 from the School of College of Arts and Sciences, 50 from the School of Business, and one from the School of Music. We would now like to take this opportunity to thank our judges, six judges, who were kind enough to participate in this event tonight. Connie Bernal is the site manager of the UCF Business Incubator at Daytona Beach International Airport and is an expert in many different business startups. She was recognized in 2009 as the best business consultant for Central Florida by the Florida Small Business Development Center now. Just last year, she was selected as one of the 2013 Influential Women in Business Volusia of Flagler Counties by the News Journal Business Report magazine.
ABA. We are currently looking for someone to hire for them, us to prepare our graduate sheet. Is this something you are familiar with? I've actually never worked with one of those before. Oh, well, I do hope after graduating from Stetson Business School that you are familiar with the basics of a balance sheet, such as an asset or a liability. Why a what? Based on a random survey of college students, over 60% choose their class schedule based on if the professor will give them a high grade to boost their GPA. Unfortunately, this is leading students to increase their GPA in an unsatisfactory way. Unfortunately, this is leading students unprepared for the real world. With CBI, this is a new algorithm that will prepare students to win employers to see students' correct assessment of their work ethic based on their class performance compared to other students, and not based on how easy of the class schedule that they choose. Thank you. What does CBI stand for? Um, no. Curriculum based index. I didn't get it. Why is it those? Yeah, essentially what this project would do is that a student a student goes and takes a class based on how easy they think the professor is. Um, what this project will basically do is it'll go on and see how the class average was, say it was a three point, every student got a three point in the class. And they took that class purposely to get a high GPA. Now if the class average is say a 70% and that student gets 82, that shows to an employee that they did a lot more work than they really worked hard to get. Okay, that's your thing. Yes. That's your thing. It's yes. better than 96 months, better than 60. Yes. So just keep it in mind.
I like it. <laughs> um, I, I also like it. Um, <laughs> I'm engaged right now. I think that my fiance would love that idea. Um, I'm wondering if you would do anything other than dresses as far as you know, something borrowed from something. Um, we're still. I think she did. Trying to save money. <laughs> we're still kind of researching the market and seeing where the demand lies, um, but that is definitely something we thought about. We thought about doing um, bridal gowns or um, shoes and accessories to go with the dresses, um, but it's just going to depend on what we determine is the market demand for that. I don't quite understand it. Given that Bridezilla is usually demand, certain yes. dresses are generally ugly. Um, <laughs> how, they demand the dresses. How do you create the supply when you don't know what the dresses are going to be? And, and given that the, the bride demands a certain type of dress, isn't that difficult to get the supply? Um, again, we're still kind of figuring everything out. Um, and one of our next steps is to figure out the specific details and put together this business plan. But the idea right now would be to offer all of the designer dresses, all of the dresses basically that are out there, um, and only order them once they have been ordered from a customer. So someone would come on the website, the bride would pick out whatever dress they want um, from the designer, anyone. Um, the bridesmaids would order them from us, we would turn around, order them from the manufacturer, send them to the person that wants to rent them. When they are done, they would return them to us, and eventually we would have to do the back and forth to just have the dresses in the inventory. Uh, have you heard of RentTheRunway.com? Yes. And how does this idea differ from that? Um, rent the Runway is not traditional bridesmaids' dresses. Um, so that would work for a more modern wedding or a less traditional wedding, but if a bride, a bridezilla, wants a specific traditional dress, they probably wouldn't be able to get it at Rent the Runway, whereas they would from
spend an average of $60 a month on baby clothing in just the first year, that $720 spent on clothing the child won't even remember wearing. I bet these parents would love to save some of this money and set it aside for their child's future college fund. Hi, my name is Danielle Hermie. I'm a finance major here at Stetson University, and I'm here to introduce you to a solution. Its name is Swap Baby. Swap Baby is an easy-to-use website designed to help parents save money on baby clothing. Parents go online, purchase a subscription ranging either from maybe a month to a year, and then they have many different options to choose from. They then get a box in the mail of baby clothing fitting to their child's specific size. When the child grows out of that box of clothing, then they, get a, they send it back and they get a new box in. Um, according to US, the US birth rate is 13 persons per 1,000, so there's no doubt there's a large market for a service like Swap Baby. There's also plenty of adult consignment stores along with subscription services, so let's combine the two. Let's make a child's consignment subscription service. This will help parents save money and alleviate some of the stress that comes with raising children. Swap Baby. I think it would be more effective if you had some sort of a 
substantial, at least an idea of what it looks like. I would completely agree with you. Um, with, throughout the competition, though, we were not allowed to use any props or anything to help enhance our presentation. Um, you know, if we can go further along with that, we'll definitely have something for you. Well, I love your idea. Just really looking forward to see the prototype. Maybe you might want to do something. Oh, it's a lot like that. Mm -hmm. Especially in Florida, when you can step down the beach. Now, this works when the laptop is closed. Does it also work for every protection that's open? Yes, sir. It does open while it's open. The, our main idea would be there would be a case covering the monitor, the screen on top, and also something that slides into the bottom. And then there would be a joint on the back that would hold it together. Okay. And it would cover the keys, I assume, because uh, because it's not going to be It would be a mat similar to the competitors, but it would also be connected to the plastic so there's no water or anything. Great. Great. Thank you. One of the rules for the competition was to make it consistent through all of the contestants to have a show cost or a thing for a while. Okay? We move to the next stage. That's when we get the prototypes and everything that shows. Sure. Enough demand in any larger city that you 
would have to, I mean, not that's, uh, my two cents, but.